Can leave the room. Oh, oh, oh. It's secret, get out of here. Come into it, do you again? No, come out. Alright. So I'm just gonna do a quick intro and then we'll yeah. start. Alright. Hello and welcome to Circus Procoston from Sec T, the tenth anniversary. I'm sitting here with Matthias Dagen and uh Hanoberg. Nice to have you. Yeah. We've just been listening to your talk uh, yeah. on um, hacking with WGET. Yeah. It was uh what what was the first thing you said in your talk? It was um it was Chelsea Manning. Yeah, Chelsea Manning. There was a New York Times article where they wrote that Chelsea Manning had used WGET for the the WikiLeaks revelations that she did, um, and it was kind of ridiculed in the IT community because, like, it was con like apparently the New York Times considered this something relevant. Although, of course, like if you download a file, of course you use WGET. Yeah, like, everyone does. It, right? The magic hacking tool WGET. <laughs> so, and I thought like that, yeah. So. Yeah. So how how did you start looking into WGET yeah. hacking? <laughs> so. Uh, um, so I write for a, a German IT news magazine and I got contacted like maybe two, three years ago by two people who had uh, investigated this Git issue where they were like seeing that they could download uh, Git directories from web pages that were deployed with Git. And that, that was kind of the first thing I knew about it. And then I figured, okay, there are similar other issues and then I kind of got deeper into it and then I also, yeah. Then it kind of got more and more. And then I also figured out there were things that apparently, like this database dump thing I mentioned, where apparently some people knew about that, but it was never discussed in public. Can you like, describe the database? So, so the idea is just like people create a, a backup of their database with, for example, MySQL dump and use a standard file name, for example, dump.sql, which is the standard file name from the documentation. and that end up ends up in a web root and then you can download it. Right. And it's, yeah, it's available for WGET hacking. Yeah. <laughs> and it's um, and I knew that other people knew about it because they saw it in my log files. Like I saw in my server logs that other oh, people, people were, were trying downloading to get it. were trying to download MySQL dumps. So I know that there were other people who knew about this, but nobody ever like said anything in public about it. At least I didn't find any articles or blog posts. Or yeah, was this included in a public tool? So I guess it's, it probably wasn't like, um, you, you have like fussing databases for uh, with word lists and uh, common sensitive files and stuff, but I've never seen it included anywhere else. Um, I don't know where it came from. Like, yeah. I just, and, but, and I also like, I, I, I heard from people talking about it, but yeah. Right. I think you wrapped it up pretty good in the in the last sentence, more or less. That a lot of stuff get placed in the web root that shouldn't actually be there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that was like the, basically the whole talk. Yeah. So. And the, I I like the the Vim sort of artifacts of <laughs> yeah. crashed Vims. Uh, yeah. You can actually find old uh, yeah. config files and stuff like that mm -hmm. that actually shouldn't be there. Swap files. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember seeing. Uh, I mean, I think this is a security vulnerability in Vim. I actually, I, I haven't done that yet. I should like bring that up on. The ah. Database. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you because could... that should be placed in temp and have secure permissions, yeah. and then you wouldn't have this issue. Because someone could just write a script which pulled that file continuously yeah. until someone edited yeah. it. Mm. Uh, right. Yeah. True. I mean, uh, you might notice that in your logs, but... Yeah, oh, sure, but if you're a huge website with lots of traffic, maybe not. Yeah. But you used, like, your own tool, uh, probably used wget in, in, the, in the background. No, it, it, it doesn't, actually. <laughs> 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 it was a bit of a lie. Oh, no, really. it's, it's but, not hacking but with wget. It's using your LF. Couldn't it be possible to find uh, a lot of these files to just Google Dorks and stuff? Uh, yeah. If I, they're indexed. Um, yeah. They would so, have to be indexed, though. So, so I mean, Google Docking is kind of a similar thing. Yeah. Um, the, the, the thing is, like, this is not easily automatable because Google tries to avoid that you use their search engine from a script. And, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, if there's a file that's just laying there but not linked from anywhere, then it yeah, wouldn't yeah. be mm -hmm. Google. So. Oh. Well, I remember seeing the... Uh the Git issue, like people having publicly yeah. available repositories, 
Yeah. Uh, that turned up in, I think, uh, Capture the Flag contest I, I was part of mm. in, even a few years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's but, but been the, known for a long time. But the way you took, took that to the extreme, like yeah. you really found some weird stuff. I was going to ask you about the, um, the PHP uh, core dumps. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, okay, so that was, is like... On Linux, when, when something crashes, then depending on how your system is configured, but it can create these core files, which is just a memory dump of the application, which then, of course, can contain all kinds of things like passwords and whatever. Mm -hmm. that, um, and if a PHP application crashes, then this file ends up in the web root because PHP runs in the web. Right. Um, but you also mentioned that uh it's quite easy to provoke PHP into crashing. Um, Could you yeah, although expand not on that a little bit? Uh, I, 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 so uh, what I was saying there is that there are quite a few bugs in PHP where it crashes and they don't intend to fix that because like these are corner cases that are like complicated to fix. Um, but I have thought about, but I have not found a way to crash PHP remotely to kind of trigger that. Consistently, no, right. Yeah. So, so you're kind of relying there that the application crashed due to some by itself. Yeah. What could you typically find in a PHP core dump for? So the, the, the database password is the very obvious thing okay. because every PHP application is using MySQL and yeah, yeah, the yeah. database password is a variable. And yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was thinking about the, uh, the Magento, uh, yeah. Magento uh, problem you found as well. Yeah. It's quite fun. <laughs> um, yeah. If you could explain a little bit okay, about that. Okay, so so then it's like Magento is using an, an XML file for their configuration, and it also contains a database password. And an XML file, like usually PHP applications use PHP files for configuration because they get parsed by the PHP parser, so you cannot just download them. But an XML file is not parsed by anything; it's just can be downloaded and they have a they prevent the access to that file with HT access but HT access is an Apache feature and Magento also runs on Nginx and if you run it on Nginx then you have to kind of yourself block access to mm. that file but I was thinking that that sounds like something that Magento should really be aware of yeah so, so uh. I, re I reported that through their bug bounty program and they told me that this has already been reported. Uh -huh. And that was the only communication I got from right. them. Like, then I asked, okay, it's already been reported, but when will you fix it? And they said nothing to that. It, you um, didn't mention how many cases of that you actually saw. Were there, uh, were there a lot? Yeah, I think it was like 200. Ooh, 200, that's, yeah. that's bad, especially for an e-commerce uh, website. Yeah. And, and in, in most of your searches, you focus the Alexa 1 million, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you can extend on that, of course, you could, for example, use the certificate transparency logs mm -hmm. for domain, then you have much bigger domain lists, mm -hmm. but, I mean, I, I didn't want to abuse that, I kind of just wanted to get a feeling how prevalent right. is this, mm -hmm. and if I scan for this, and there's like, People might if it's get more than a hundred times, you know. then I say, then it's relevant enough, and, and of course, there's also the issue, I skipped that in the talk, because I was out of time, that you, I'm trying to do the right thing, and I'm trying to inform the people, mm -hmm. But that's not so easy at scale because, like, <laughs> no. if I have like yeah, um, yeah. thousand people have these backup files there. All right, um, start writing emails. <laughs> so, so what I'm doing there is actually that I'm just uh, there's, there's, there's a service. <laughs> where, no, <laughs> um, there's a service where you can get abuse contacts automatically via an API, mm -hmm. and then I'm informing their abuse contacts, which is kind of not really the thing what abuse contacts are for but it usually mm. gets to the right people. Mm. So. Right. You mentioned certificates. You found yeah. those as well. Like I found private keys. keys. Yeah. 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 Certificates, you, they are public anyway, yeah, but I found private <laughs> keys, yeah. 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 Uh, people put stupid stuff online. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's really true. But you really took it to the extreme in this talk. Yeah. I found it very interesting. I'd be happy to 
to try out your tool when it's released. Yeah, uh, so I hope I'll release it really soon. I mm-hmm. think it's in a state. And I think that this, these issues are not going to be less in the future. It's going to be more. Like the, yeah. the abandoned domain JavaScript inclusion stuff. Yeah. yeah. Since we That's see a lot of more of JavaScript inclusion today. Mm-hmm. So when all these yeah. frameworks go out of yeah. use and they go down, then we're going to have a huge problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I hope a bit that, that by releasing that tool, I can make an improvement here because like I, I don't I, I I I'm not very happy with the states of freely available vulnerability scanning tools. I think there should be more in that area. Like a lot of man, many of these things are scanned by commercial tools, but of course they are not available to everyone. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Could you just ask you what was the single worst thing you found? You can redact any names if you want. <laughs> uh, I think it was this pharmacy. Yeah, the pharmacy. Yeah, yeah. The customer data, thing. From yeah, pharmacy. yeah. Customer data, including what they'd ordered for, what was it, 600,000? 600, 600, That's yeah. a lot. So this is kind of the biggest Australian online pharmacy. Ouch. Did they, co- did, did they respond in a good way? They just removed the file. Okay, so That's one way. <laughs> but, At least they didn't f- threaten to see I, it. I was a bit disappointed that this didn't gain any media attention in Australia. You'd think it would. Yeah, because like... Did I, you notify Troy Hunt? <laughs> yeah, I did. Ah. Um, so, so I had I wrote an article about this issue for a German newspaper, and we actually made a translated version of that article mm. online. And like this was the same where we had also this database from the German Postal Service, and in Germany it generated quite some right. media impact. Hmm. Yeah. Well, hopefully people will think twice before putting stuff online yeah. in the future. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So unless you guys have anything else to add, uh, I think that's about it. Thanks. Don't forget to listen to Secus Park Austin and also, of course, come to Sec T. Yay! All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, There was one more thing I was thinking about, but I forgot.